Welcome to Salzburg, Austria. We are at a campground in Estonia. You don't know the name of this place. Uh, it is it's a place that is open really only for about five more days until the season ends. But it's small, but it's cute. And there is, I don't know, it looks, it smells like clean. There's a lot of flowers. Welcome to Salzburg. We, we finally made it after that long drive that 12 hour drive that it should have been an hour and a half. It should have been an hour and a half. We finally made it into Austria and we finally settled into our campsite. Now we're doing a very good maintenance of ourselves and realizing that we have to stay in campsites to get ourselves into a healthy groove. At least a couple days a week for work and school and, and frankly for our, our mindset. Yep. And I think it's going to be a really positive week because of that. Right, so to get everything into a campsite and get everything set up, we have to like dig into our entire, well, I think they call it like a storage unit. I don't even but, know what I mean, call it. Ours a, a is garage. so small, so it doesn't take us long. I mean, what, what does it take us? 15 minutes to unpack and set up? It does, but we have like so many things just to get our table out. It's, it's, the table, to, unfortunately, is all the way in the back and there's no other way to fit it. We everything out and we have a lot of like knickknacks and stuff like that. <laughs> we were supposed to have Skateboards and rollerblades and it's, it's crazy. a bucket. But we're in Sim we're in Salzburg. Welcome to Camping Car Kitchen with Jessica. <laughs> we are cooking bratwurst and sauerkraut with potatoes and some beer and hoping it's going to turn out okay. We're trying to do several meals in each country and so I've layered some potatoes and then I layered a couple cups of sauerkraut and now I've put on onions and then I'm going to heavily sprinkle in two cloves of garlic which seems like quite a bit but that's what the recipe calls for. And then I'm going to layer the brats. Any volunteers for brats in the house? Uh, no. no? <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys are not brats. I'm gonna layer the brats on top. In here in the crock pot, I have a layer of potatoes on the bottom, which you can't see, then the sauerkraut, the onions, the garlic, and then the brat is laid on top of it. And I'm gonna add in the next ingredients. Now this is actually part of the recipe. This is not me opening the beer in the middle of the day. One cup of beer. It has to be good German beer. Don't be putting any of that Miller Lite or Bud Lite or stuff in there. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Again, don't be using that nasty stuff. Get the good stuff. This is, this is from what I understand, because I have a German education now, that this is, this is the crucial part, the beer and the Dijon, and of course the brats. And then once your mustard is, your Dijon mustard is mixed into the beer, Sprinkle in some salt, some pepper, and then pour it over the rest of everything that's already in the crock. Oh wow, this looks delicious. Oh my gosh, this looks great. Let's just put in a little more beer. You never know when you might need a little more beer. And we are good to go. So we're gonna put it, um, put the cover on and cook it, slow cook it for six hours. And hopefully it's going to be delicious after that. Everyone's going to want to eat it. It's going to taste just like we were in Germany. Because we're in Austria now. Thank you for joining Camping Cooking. We'll be back another day. So what would you think of Jessica's kitchen cooking camping car corner? All right, we don't have a name for it. <laughs> we're thinking about we're going to continue this from time to time. We're cooking different meals in different countries. And we need a name for it. Comment and let us know what you think we should call it. We're totally up for cheesy or quirky or a play on words we're or anything. We're trying to give you a view of what sort of the dishes look like around the world too as, as in addition to actually showing you what things are around the world. So this is our contribution to your cooking extravaganza. And it's going to be kind of quirky like it was and we'll share a little bit with you and then um, you'll see what we're eating along the way. Yep. All right. So enough about cooking. So <laughs> let, let's let's talk about traditions. Now when we left our home base in the U.S. we, we left with a handful of traditions, birthdays, anniversaries, celebrations. We just love, I mean we just love traditions and and having fun with it and celebrating pretty much anything. Now that we're traveling, whenever we're in a country and we find a tradition we like, we kind of 
pack it in our bag of goodies and we take it with us to the next country. And so we, we probably doubled the traditions and celebrations that we've had along the way since we left the United States over three years ago. We have a lot of traditions. But then in the meantime, we've added two other traditions and one of those is Dream Day. And Dream Day is it's something special, special for our family. We, we go all out on Dream Day. All out. It is dream day, yeah. It is dream day, yeah. Okay, so today is dream day, and what dream day is basically is, is us celebrating the first time we ever, well, went to Costa Rica. This is our three year anniversary for Dream Day, or the day we started traveling. So we're officially starting our fourth year of travel right now, right, right, right now. So since we started traveling, we've always called our day that we launched Dream Day, which is basically us launching on what we think is gonna be our life of travel. So far it's not over yet, and so far it's still working out okay. But on this day, we take on everything that we want to in terms of just having a day of total indulgence. So we're at the store now and the kids are picking out their menu for today. I have to admit, it's not gonna be that healthy. Marco, you're gonna break it. No, that's pistachio. No, we're going vanilla. We get two M&Ms because they don't have that many in them. Hello? <laughs> I can't see where the Macro man. Wait, wait, I think I found... Oh, there we go, I've got an eye hole. Well, we are here. here to tell you about what we did for Dream Day. I made a dream jar. In the dream jar, we shall be putting all of our dreams. All of my dreams. I have a great many, so I might need a bigger jar. So why is Dream Day important to you? and why do you think it's important in general? Well, it's important to me because it's the only day of the year that I eat so much ice cream with all the toppings I can fit on top of it. That's it. Why is Dream Day important to me was the first question, Mr. Swero. That's not good word. <laughs> I'm gonna ramble as much as I want. People like to listen to me ramble. I've they, never seen one come they, and saying, I love it when Jessica rambles. <laughs> they private message me. I'm sure they do. It's important to me because it marks the day that we made a huge change in our family, um, to spend more time with our kids, to live simpler, to learn through the world and explore and understand other countries, and to live what we felt was our authentic path in life. And <clears throat> with all of that, I think it's important to, at least for our family, since we love celebrations, to designate a day um, that brings us back to where we started and makes us appreciate um, how far we've come and to celebrate our journey and what we've done as a family. And National Ice Cream Day! I love this day so much. Bye guys. Alan, what is your dream day festivity looking like? Take the biggest ice cream scoop you can and pile everything else on top. Um, what are your dreams going forward? To be in the RV again this time next year? That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> no, we might kill each other before that. To visit at least 40 countries by the time we're... To have visited at least 40 countries by the time next dream day. By next dream day? What's your, what country are you most excited about in Europe? Denmark. <laughs> Ava? Probably Greece or Norway. So the in Salzburg, there's are alive all right, all right, all right. With I, this I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> in Salzburg, people, the, one of the biggest things that there is to do there, one of the biggest tourist attractions, <laughs> traps. Maybe? And we typically don't go over tourist attractions or, as we'll said, traps. But it's the sound of music, guys. Right. I mean, so Salzburg is known for the sound of music, the von traps, and the whole nine yards. And so we decided that it was time to do a tourist trap thing and we did now we it have wasn't a bad. we have a family connection so that was one of the reasons why we did it as well yes we're far distant relatives of the von trap family <laughs> from my cuban relatives here. <laughs> so back in 2010 alum was in a stage production of the sound of music and we're lucky enough that 
in this lovely town of our Salzburg. They celebrate that musical every day, probably eight times a day on so many tours and excursions. <laughs> and today we're gonna go on one. We're gonna go see The Sound of Music live on set. I don't even know what we're gonna no, call it. No, no, no. We're going to some of the locations of the outside filming. I don't think we're going to any inside stuff. So. Okay. Yeah, that was all done in the studio. That's where we're going then. To sit? Yeah, I don't know. Who'd you book it through? I don't know. So I think maybe we just go get on the bus. Do we just go get on the bus? We're always late. <laughs> it's a full bus. Just in the good time. <laughs> Gonna have a sing along, a sound of music. You get to sing along to all your favorite songs from the soundtrack. Have you all got your singing voices with you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as we make our way towards the city centre here, let's tell you a little bit about what did happen when Hollywood arrived. Hollywood being 20th Century Fox Studios, who produced the movie. They started filming the movie early January 1964. They took a break from the studio filming to come here to Salzburg initially for six weeks. Uh, last week of April 1964. Guys, keep walking. Keep up with the rest of the group, please. So bus tours are... The in this case, it actually is fun because the sound of music is a sing-along. It was a sing-along. So, we, although we were pretty much the only four singing, we were no. There, were, <laughs> there was like some Russian couple that was in there too. That was and singing. singing, but that's it. <laughs> a bus full, and that's it. Was singing. I mean, we really enjoyed the bus tours in Ecuador. We so, did. You know, we really enjoyed them. They were a lot of fun. The buses were funky, so we decided to give it a shot on this bus tour, and it wasn't too bad. I mean, we did, we did the, we did the bus thing, and we enjoyed it. We I don't were, know if we're gonna do the bus thing again, though, right? Only if it makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't always make sense. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the other side of the lake of this beautiful white building behind me. This is the house that Hollywood chose to be the Von Trapp house in the movie. Guys, please watch the others. Excuse me. We've got three of these seven music buses. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's an exciting. Are you ready for a single on the sound of music? Yes. Yeah. Whoa. That made a difference. You're ready. So, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the ride. Sing along as we make our way into the hills that I'm hoping are going to be alive <laughs> with the sound of music. Here we go. So we don't really like bus tours. Not that we don't like them, we just don't do them that often. And, and the reason I think is- it's because the, there's, we don't feel like there's enough bang for the buck. Well, not only that, but usually there were four of us. And if we're four of us and you do a private, it's usually maybe like a 10% more to get the private. Yeah, and you get so you get so much more. I mean, right. you, really, you don't get kind of the can um, memorized, do it 500 times a day you know, show, you get you get kind of more personal and the kids can engage and ask questions and we prefer it, but in this case it was 500 It was, it was like double, if not it was more, like you know, triple. Four, it was three or four, four times it as much. It was a lot more. Yeah, so, so we chose this we're, route. We're, we're, we're rolling with this bus and it, it's actually kind of nice. The, the tour guide is a lot of fun. He's getting everyone He's singing. He's fun and the kids are enjoying it. Um, so of course Will and I will enjoy it. And the bus driver has a, a bar on board, which is kind of weird. <laughs> Kind of but I guess it's Austria. I don't know. <laughs> he was offering us beers at 9, 9.30 in the morning. I know, but now it's 11, so maybe we might know. <laughs> look at this view, guys. Look. Look at that. Gorgeous. A doe, a deer, a female deer, lay a drop of golden sun. So, in true Sound of Music spirit, I'm going to have the warm apple strudel. I'm going to share it with Gretel. Avalon, who was Gretel once upon a time. Is that one of your favorite things? <laughs> so we are sung out of Sound of Music. We, <laughs> I'm not. We, Do we definitely. A deer, a female deer, red, a drop of. Where are the kids? Did you get it, Avalon? I got it. That is the luckiest balloon alive. 
so that's it for our day in Salzburg. Now we know that there's more to do in Salzburg than the sound a lot of music. More. So we're gonna be here for a whole lot longer and we're gonna see like real history stuff. Yeah. Like like stuff about the archbishop, prince, etc. Mozart. Uh, we're gonna I see a lot. Mozart. We're gonna go to Mozart's house. We're gonna see a lot of stuff. But and we, we're gonna eat a lot. We're too. gonna eat more pretzels and more sausages. Luckily for us, we found more sausages. <laughs> So, so we're in luck there, but we're gonna end this here. If you have any suggestions of things that we should be doing along our route, we're thinking Italy and maybe more south of France, southern yeah. coast of Spain, let us know. Yeah, because we're southern planning Italy, we're planning point. right now, southern right. Italy. So, and, and we've never been to that area, so no. we're open. I mean, we're open for, you know, unique experiences like locals, um, and cool cultural things, showers. If anyone wants to offer up a shower for Will, he's doing his European shower tour. Or oh, if you don't and need cool about campsites that cool we can campsites, stay Cool campsites, yeah, boondocking places. Right. We're, we're super excited and we cannot wait to share this story with you guys. So until then, subscribe and you'll see them all as they come along. We'll see you next time on au World revoir. Towning. Ciao. Bye. I have got this in some time. Good job, my guys. Toe. What? I'm so proud of you. Okay. <laughs> I missed my big shot. <laughs>